Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to avoid visible texture repetition while working with non-organic textures. So this is the scene I'm working on, showcased in other videos of this channel. We will focus on this side stone wall, where I want to create a displacement and a normal map for now. Here I have the current UVs for the wall, just a basic planar mapping. Right, in Substance Designer I have created a few texture variations from the original one. I am a beginner at Substance Designer so I'm not going to do a tutorial on Designer yet and the result is not perfect either but this is my progress so far. I am just focusing in the height and normal maps. Then I just exported all the textures, selecting only the normal and the high channels. Back to Maya, let's create a material to test our textures. Loading in the first texture to the base color so we can see it in the viewport. As you can see, we need to repeat it a few times, as the scale is way off. I am repeating it 5 times, but looks too big for the reference I have. So I found that a value like 10 would fit better. Although the texture is stylable, we have visible texture repetition, so we need to somehow combine the different textures created in Designer to create a unique texture. Here I'm loading the other variants to see how they look scale-wise and also check the repeating patterns. Now let's create a flat shader to bake the texture we see in the viewport so we can have a scale reference in Photoshop where we will assemble our textures. So let's render the selected geometry to a texture. Although I'm going to be working in a 4K texture, I'm just making this in 1K resolution because from experience this feature tends to crash a lot when rendering iRes output. As I was telling you, this tends to crash a lot so let's try it again. And this time it worked out. I had to disable the recording software. I just imported the file into Photoshop, this is the bake texture. Again, we will only be using this for a scale reference. So let's drag it to a file I created off camera, which is 4K resolution and 32 bit depth. A bit overkill for what we're doing, but since we're working with displacement, it's worth the extra values. Now we need to scale it to fit the final texture resolution by 400%. I also created a UV snapshot previ previously in Maya. Let's drag it to the main file. Make sure you use the shift key while dragging so it keeps the placement. Now let's open all the height and normal maps variants we have for the final texture. Here are all the four different variants, both normal and height. Let's start by dragging first the height, then the normal, and group it, so when we manipulate them, they keep connected. You can also use the link layers feature, but I use groups instead. Doing the same for all the other textures. Now we can easily take the first texture and mat match the scale with the transform tool. We have an obvious brick that can be used as reference. Finally, we can distribute the different variations of the textures along the UVs using flip horizontal and vertical to avoid repetition since we only have four variants, which isn't much.
After you distribute all the textures around, you should have something like this. This is just a test I'm doing, so it's not the best texture ever, but we'll do to show you the workflow. I ended up using only three variants, as the fourth one had too much small stones. I have to work on that later. Now we can export out the texture to test how it looks in Maya. For now I am exporting only the displacement or height texture. In Maya I have a basic shader with the displacement texture connected. If I drag it to the base color you can see, you can see how it looks in the viewport. As you can see we have visible seams where the different textures meet. We will fix it later in Substance Painter. For the displacement I am using a value of 5 with the scalar 0 value set to 0 0.5 and 3 subdivisions. Ok, let's do a quick render to see how it looks. As you can see from the render camera, this, the seams don't look so visible, but we'll fix them in Painter in case we need to go closer or use it in, in a game engine. Now in Photoshop let's make all the normal maps visible and export it out. In Maya we will need to export the geometry to work in Substance Painter where we will fix the seams. Now in Painter creating a new project, selecting the wall geometry and setting the resolution to 4K. Let's just import the textures created in Photoshop, both height and normal. Also make sure you save your progress. Now creating a fill layer and connecting the textures to their respective channel. In the drop down we can see the height and normal channels now. And as you can see we need to fix the seams. Let's get back to Photoshop to create a Sims reference so we can easily see them in Painter. Just a basic red stroke around the different textures will do. Just copy the layer style from one layer to all the other ones. Finally, export it out. After importing the texture, create a new fill layer and connect it to the base color. And now we can easily enable and disable this layer to keep checking where we need to paint the seams. In the first fill layer, let's add a paint and set all the channels blending mode to pass through, so we can clone stamp all the textures at the same time. Ideally you would have all the channels being painted, but in this case I am only going to be painting the height and normal channels. We are doing this in Substance Painter because Photoshop as far as I know doesn't allow you to paint multiple textures at the same time. Switching to the UV view and checking the eye channel so we can easily paint out the seams. Select the Clone Stamp tool, it works the same way as in Photoshop, the only difference is that we need to use the V key to set the source, instead of the Alt key. Make sure to select the correct channels in the Paint Properties, in this case Height and Normal. After painting the first seam you can see that also affected the normal channel, which is what we want. If we could clone stamp or paint in the UV view without the right settings, you might find that we'll start to bleed to other islands. So let's create a new paint layer and set again the channel's blending mode to pass through. Now in the alignment, change it to UV. If we test the clone stamp tool now, it's not bleeding to the other islands as before. So let's start painting out the seams. Sometimes I just block because I am so used to using the Alt key to set the source like in Photoshop that I have to remember every time that I need to use the V key in Painter. Now 
Now you just need to paint all the seams and export all the respective textures. I will work on that later. Just to finish this video, and as this is a work in progress, I am going to connect also the normal map and do a clay render of the entire scene. As you can see this is the progress I have so far in this project. In this video we worked on the texture of the stone wall, but this is not yet the final texture as I am not 100% happy with the result. But hopefully this was useful to you somehow, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and let me know if you like this video. See you in the next one, bye bye.